In this video, we will review the basic steps to deploy a VM series firewall from the AWS Marketplace. The VM series is one aspect of the Palo Alto Network's cloud strategy, which also includes how it traps host based protection and API based solutions, which protect the configuration and content of your cloud workloads. There are many use cases for deploying a next generation firewall into your AWS environment. A sampling of those include as a gateway or north-south workloads and a segmentation model to separate applications in an east-west design to facilitate hybrid connectivity to your on-premises network and as a VPN solution for access in and out of your cloud environment. Palo Alto Networks provides flexible licensing options so our customers can consume the next-gen firewall in a consumption model that meets their needs. We start with the Bring Your Own License model which is a traditional purchase process through a reseller where the customer can predict their spend and acquire the licenses necessary for their needs. Second is the pay-as-you-go model, where the customer pays hourly or annually through the marketplace, available in two bundle options, the first being bundle one with threat prevention and the second being bundle two, which includes threat, URL, wildfire, and premium support for our larger customers. We do have an enterprise licensing agreement where the customer receives a single authorization code for reuse among all of their VM series. An added benefit is that this license model also includes virtual panorama. There is minimum and recommended sizing of your AWS instances based on the licenses type. It is interesting to note that the VM 300 is also the Pago size. So if you are running bundle one or bundle two from the Pago, you will want to refer to the VM 300 series for the recommended size. Next, we will review the diagram of the solution we will deploy, along with the prerequisite steps that need to be configured. We will be deploying a VM series firewall with three interfaces, one for management, one for untrust, and one for trust. Everything will be deployed within a given availability zone in one region. Prior to deploying the VM series, you will need to ensure that you have a VPC with the three subnets mentioned for your own deployments. You may utilize up to eight subnets, one for management and seven for data plane. You may also bootstrap the firewall using an AWS storage bucket. And if using behind a load balancer, you will need to perform interface swap on the management interface as the AWS load balancers can only target the lowest ethernet interface. At the time of creation, you will be given the choice of using an existing public key or creating a new one. During the deployment process, you will be given the choice of which license type to utilize, what machine size. You will map the NIC to the correct subnet, and we will review locking down the management interface to the source IP of your location. After the deployment, we will step through SSHing into the firewall to configure the initial admin IP address as one is not set for you, and you will need to configure it. Once the firewall is deployed, we will enable DHCP on the data plane, th data plane interfaces, map them to their correct zone, and configure a sample policy to route traffic between the zones. For additional templates, we do have our live.paloalto-networks.com forward slash cloud template landing page, where you can obtain other AWS scripts and templates. A good first starting place with our cloud formation templates is the two tiers, the two tier sample, which will deploy a web and database tier along with a firewall to segregate the traffic. We will now step through the demo of the creation of the VM series into your VPC. We start first with reviewing the prerequisites. In the VPC menu, you will see that we have a single VPC with a slash 16 subnet cider. Within subnets, we have three subnets created, a management, a private and a public, each with a slash 24 CIDR. Both our management and public subnets have a route table with a route to the IGW, the management so that you can manage the firewall remotely, and the public to allow in and outbound traffic from the internet. Lastly, I have pre-configured two security groups. One is allow all, which will allow all traffic in and out of the firewall. The second being to allow management traffic from my IP address. We will need both port 22 and port 443 for management configuration. 
We will now move over to EC2 to launch our instance. Hit the launch instance link and move over to the marketplace. Search for a Palo Alto. And here you can see bundle one, bundle two, bring your own license, as well as Panorama, our management platform. In this case, we'll select BYOL. And it brings up our pricing details. Click continue. We will go with the smallest available option, and M4 extra large, and move to configure instance details. We will select our network and VPC that we are placing it into. And in this case, we are attaching the management interface. We will assign a public IP address so we can manage it remotely. No other options need to be configured. One point of note, as you move on, if you do move on to a bootstrapping inter configuration, you will highlight the advanced details and in the user data is where you would put your bootstrapping information. That is beyond the scope of this training. Please review the additional links for more detail. No additional storage changes are needed. Add tags, this is optional, but just good for good housekeeping, I like to add a name. We'll move to our security group configuration. And here's where we can select that existing security group that we have created to allow management. And we can see down the bottom here, 22 and 443 available from my IP address. And review and launch. Here are our instance details, and we will select launch. Here's where I mentioned earlier that we can add a new pair, key pair or choose an existing one. In my case, I have an existing key pair in this region, so I will select it, acknowledge, and launch. We will pause the recording now while this in instance launches, as it can take several minutes. I will come back to you when we move to an instant state of running and we have passed our status checks. And we're back with a running firewall that has passed its health checks. First thing we need to do is grab the public IP that we assigned to the management interface. We will verify that the firewall is up and running by accessing the firewall with HTTPS. You will see we presented with a username and password dialog. If this is your first time accessing the firewall, you will receive a self-signed certificate warning. This is expected and you can accept through. Once you've logged into the firewall, if you choose to, you can replace that self-signed certificate. First thing we need to do is SSH into the firewall and set the admin password. I will connect with the private key that we specified during creation and a username of admin. Access the configure menu and the command is set mgt config users, specify the admin account, and we are setting the password. Set and confirm a secure password and commit the changes. Once this completes, we will be able to log in with the GUI. Once we have logged in, we can verify a few items. You will access in via the dashboard. We can close the welcome window. You'll see we have a VM mode of AWS and a software agent of 8.1. Jumping over to the device menu, since this is bring your own licensing, 
you would come to the license menu to license the firewall. For the purposes of this video, we do not need to license, so we'll move on to configuration. Moving back to the EC2 management console, we need to configure a few network interfaces for use with this firewall. The first thing we'll do is allocate an elastic IP for the untrust interface. Once that is allocated, we'll move over to the network interfaces menu and add a couple of new interfaces. First one being the untrust. We will add it to the public subnet and grant it a security group of allow all. While not common in many EC2 deployments to allow all traffic to your instance, this being a hardened firewall, we will control traffic flow within the firewall policy. Next, we will create the trust side and add it to the private subnet. An important step is to ensure that both interfaces have source and destination check disabled. This allows the AWS fabric to send traffic not destined for the firewall through it. Moving back over to the firewall, we will attach the interfaces. Starting first with the untrust, which will be associated with ETH11. And then moving on to the trust side. Next, we will move back to the firewall and configure those interfaces. We move to the network menu, open our ETH11. It will be a layer three interface. The default router is fine and we will create the untrust zone. Moving over to IPv4, we will use DHCP client. And since this is the internet facing interface, we will allow it to create the default route. Next, we will move on to ETH12. Same thing, layer three, default virtual router, create the trust zone, spell it correctly. also DHCP, but we will not create the default route on this interface. And with that, we will commit our changes and verify our, our IP addresses. Commit is successful. Let's check our DHCP. We've got an IP address in the 21 network, which is our untrust. And we also have an IP address in the 11 network. Our final step is to create a security policy that allows traffic to move between the zones. I am allowing all just for the purposes of showing the flow. We'll allow all traffic from the untrust. Actually, we will go outbound. to the untrust. Any application on its default port and we will allow the traffic and log it. For traffic moving to and from the internet, you may need a NAT policy 
to hide the traffic behind the untrust interface. Or if this is inbound, you will have a destination nav policy, being as those are environment specific, you will configure those to meet your needs. Touching on a few additional topics that you will uncover, once you move through initial configuration of the firewall, you will most likely delve into the area of bootstrapping, where we are able to load our initial configuration that contains our licensing, panorama information, initial software, dynamic content. It is an S3 bucket that the firewall phones home to during initial boot up and loads that configuration on first launch. Another common architecture you will encounter is a load balancer sandwich. We will use the external load balancer to distribute traffic among a pool of firewalls using the health checks for survivability and possibly even an auto scale group to increase capacity. Traffic is then moved to an internal load balancer. Distribute the traffic among your web form. Some key links to encounter as you move through Palo Alto networks in the AWS environment. We have our AWS landing page at aws.paloaltonetworks.com and the landing page for all of our templates, live.paloaltonetworks.com forward slash cloud template. Thank you for consuming this video. Good luck with your future next-gen firewall deployments.